today we're adding the piranha to the 700 gallon aquarium. But first, we gotta drain their tank, remove all of their decor, and then move them. Because there's absolutely no way we're going to be able to move them in a fully set up tank. Now the problem with shutting down the Piranha Aquarium and moving them to the 700 gallon is I love them in that 180 gallon. I thought that aquarium was absolutely phenomenal. However, I think in the 700 gallon they'll just do a lot better. Of course you put fish in a bigger tank, a lot of the times they will do better. This will just allow us to get even more Piranha and turn that into a jaw-dropping aquarium. Perhaps having a few hundred Tetras swimming above them that are true schoolers. With that said, I love their tank and I'm going to reuse the escaping materials that were in that tank and we're going to set up an entirely new aquarium and add the fish to it in this video plus add the fish to the seven the piranha to the 700 gallons so we got a lot to do so this aquarium is now a south american cichlid tank for the most part there is angelfish severums festivums there's some corydora there's some epistogramma there's some monstrous sized bleeding heart tetras uh, and this tank is just full of life obviously looking to be a little overstocked right now uh, and in time we'll see how this pans out and works out long term however uh, I just love the look of it uh, plenty of cover and most of the time the, uh, the larger cichlids will spend their time over here close to cover and the tank just fills out it's an amazing skate for some amazing fish um, now where did these fish come from well you guys will remember when we were setting up uh, well, when we were going to launch a public aquarium, I was consolidating a lot of my fish and set up a community aquarium in the 2000. Now that tank never happened, but the fish stayed with me. All of these fish went into a temporary holding tank below, and the walrus did at first. However, the walrus are now in my house uh, in a 120 gallon breeding tank, and they are doing absolutely phenomenal. Perhaps at some point we could take a look at that as well. But right now, uh, I just want to enjoy them all to myself. After we added the piranha to the aquarium, it took them about three or four days to kind of acclimate to their surroundings. But once they did, oh wow. Well, first and foremost, you can't even really see them. These guys are so small in a 700 gallon compared to a uh, 180, but look at what they're doing. They're spending all of their time in and amongst all of the plants. Just looking absolutely incredible when we take a closer look at them. Currently, I believe there's 16, which is less of a number than we started out with, but at times they would cannibalize each other and eat the weaker ones, which is pretty normal in a large pack of piranhas. Heck, some of them even have bite marks, but that just goes to show when they do feed, sometimes they will bite each other. They're not necessarily doing it on purpose, uh, but when they go for the food, they'll sometimes uh, get each other as well. Now, one of the things I was thinking was adding in another 14, bringing up this number to a total of 30 piranha. Now, maybe even more, but could you imagine a 700 gallon with like 30 to 50 adult piranha? We're likely gonna have to do 30. Now that I say 50 out loud, it just seems like an astronomical number. Now, if we look closely, uh, and I'm not sure if I could see them any of them right now, because one of the things I did was make sure that fish can get in behind the uh, logs there. So if they're ever feeling threatened, if they ever need a place away from everybody else and hide, they can go behind those logs and hide. But uh, of course, oh, there's some in the back there. Kind of maybe see them up there. Uh, I added in 15 red-eyed tetras just to see. Oh, there's another one right there in the logs. Uh, I added in 15 red-eyed tetras, which is a true schooling fish, relatively uh, simple to keep and common enough to get. I added in 15 simply to give these guys a test run. Will you go after them? Will you eat them? What's going to happen? Because these piranha are not that big. They're all three to five inches uh, and they can get up to like eight to 12 inches. This is the red belly piranha. Um, but they don't view the tetras as a food source. At first when I added them in, they kind of chased them around, but then lost interest. Uh, so that's a good sign. They're not eating the 15 that's in there. There's, I, I see them and I try to count them every day. So what that means to me is the test was successful and we can go ahead and add more in. I'm thinking uh, like around 200, it would just be absolutely incredible. And the red eyes sp spend most of their time near the surface schooling and the piranhas stay down low for the most part as well. So long-term, this tank could be absolutely incredible. It's also clearing up considerably uh, ever since I um, you know, kind of set this tank up. It was a bit cloudy and whatnot, but it is, it is uh, doing really well. The filtration cycled, but just in case I took this massive block out of a holding tank 
it's a mass you can see it right there it's ugly it's just sitting there right now but it's fully cycled and uh, just to help with the extra bio load and whatnot just in case i don't want to have any sort of mini cycle or anything like that i will have to adjust the wave maker here because it's blowing the sand but this tank guys is just it's just absolutely phenomenal i know we say that too much and i gotta try to figure out a new word to say but i'm just i'm just blown away from it i think this long term is just gonna look incredible i love how uh, they all kind of stick together. I love how they also spread out, but they all have the same characteristics. They love being in and amongst the plants. I think that we're gonna see an additional plant explosion and growth due to the addition of more nitrogen and waste being added to the tank. I'm still technically on, uh, you know, whether or not I wanna add in CO2 to the tank. I have two 10 pound tanks of CO2 ready to go. I just don't know if I want to do it just yet. I want to add in the other 200 red-eyed tetras whenever I can get them and make sure everybody's okay then. And then once I have a balance or at least uh, the stocking finalized, then I can play around with uh, CO2 levels and whatnot. But this tank is just absolutely gorgeous. I think it's just a fantastic way to display piranha. They're not touching the plants. They are doing fantastic. You know, wait till we do a feeding video. Um, and you guys are going to see just how incredible this tank is. Uh, and, and, and I think it could potentially get so many more eyes on the hobby. And that's something so I do try to do at times. I don't recommend setting up a massive 700-gallon aquarium and getting piranha. This is a huge, huge, huge uh, expense. And maybe that's something I should do at some point. It's kind of an eye-opener to what a lot of the things that I do cost. Uh, but with that said, I mean, I mean there's tens of thousands of fish and combinations and things that you could do in the hobby and I just hope that you find something that you are successful with and are truly enjoying because this is just incredible. I, I remember the first fish I ever got in the hobby was a uh, piranha. The very first fish I ever kept was a piranha so it's incredibly ironic for me to know that I now have a 700 gallon piranha aquarium and uh, I'm just in love. This is what I got into the hobby for, seeing a piranha in a planted aquarium. And uh, so it just kind of gives me chills to, to now have one and, and to think that maybe I'll do the same for somebody else. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I got to get back. I think I'm going to do a water change on this tank, but we'll do a feeding video on this tank. And it's, it is insane. Wait till you see it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. If you're not subscribed, make sure you are already.